presumably my endocannabinoid system. And I was also smoking joints in the alley uh, outside the dance club. So I was, what I'm experiencing now with running high and listening to music is really just sort of re-experiencing uh, uh, the Pentecostal church or the dance club uh, right. in my 20s. And it just never really thought of those things as exercise. And I think it's the authority aspect of exercise that is one of the biggest reasons that people don't do it. Mm. Uh, they're shamed into doing it. They're, they're told that they're fat, they're ugly, they're gonna die. You know, their doctor's getting after them, their spouse is getting after them. Don't you wanna see your grandchildren? How can you be so selfish? You know, it's all this like negative chat or negative energy coming at people in relation to exercise. Also, like since you, as you mentioned, um, since they were children, uh, they've been told this. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think children who are really young, maybe like before seven or so, they often don't need to be told to exercise because uh, they just know it as play. They just know right. it as a big field, other kids play a game, let's climb on stuff, uh, you know, let's scream, let's uh, push our bodies as hard as they can until we get dizzy. Like <laughs> these are things that they just in intrinsically know to do. And I think as you get older and the authority angle of uh, exercise sets in in school uh, and then with parents as well. And then later on, like I said, with a doctor or a spouse or just society in general, like there's nowhere in all of that chatter to just enjoy it. Mm -hmm. You know, I was kind of blessed, I guess, in that nobody really was paying attention or nobody really cared uh, about whether or not I was running. So like when I went out and did it, it was just like, oh, this is interesting. This turned out to be fun. I didn't have anyone else being like, way to go, you know, or good for you or <laughs> Or like, you know, are you doing that enough? You were doing it this much last week. Are you doing it enough this week? Right. Uh, I find that, that sometimes tracking all of those things really is a bit of a deterrent to me. I used to, I, I've never been a runner. I'm, I'm, I hate running, but I love to swim. I was actually a swim teacher in my 20s out in California. And if a student didn't show up for a swim class, I would just spend those 30 minutes swimming. And I loved it. And I would do that multiple times a day. And, and it's because nobody told me to do it and nobody was getting on to me that I think I really enjoyed just the rhythm of, of listening to my breath in the water, yeah. you know, moving, moving the same way every single time and trying to sort of watch my body and, and see if I could get myself to turn in the same way. And it was, it was like watching my body mechanics. It was super meditative. And I also swam in one of those infinity pools that has like a jet that pushes at mm -hmm. you. And there was actually a mirror on the bottom of the floor so that we could analyze people's strokes properly. And it was so relaxing to just swim and watch yourself. If I could do that high, man, I could do that all day. Like I really feel like I could do that all day long. What is it that you use? Do you use edibles? Do you use vapes? Um, when you're training, when you're running, how do you use cannabis and you're running right now? Uh, for me, I like to make my own edibles. I've got this little decarboxylator, which is kind of like a tiny oven uh, that has its own uh, sensors that you know measure how long the cannabis should be cooked at what temperature. And then I take that and I put it in a coffee grinder, uh, grind up the cannabis real fine, and then mix it in with these edibles that I make that are made of cashews, uh, cinnamon, coconut, uh, dates, um, coconut oil, butter, you know, really fatty stuff to, mm. to uh, activate uh, the cannabis. That helps it bind in you as well, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you have to have fat uh, or alcohol in your system for the cannabis to be activated. And yeah, I take 10 to 20 milligrams. Uh, that's a nice little window for me where I don't get that intoxicated. And I just feel a sort of gentle groove uh, with the cannabis. Uh, I find that it yeah, after a certain point, a biphasic effect sets in, which is like the opposite of what you're going for on the small end of the spectrum. Suddenly on the other end of the bell curve, you got like anxiety and lethargy and paranoia and lack of coordination. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and sometimes that's great if you want to just like watch a movie or fall asleep or, or whatever. Um, but I find that with uh, exercise, um, you do need a, a certain moderate amount and that differs from uh, person to person. Uh, everyone's endocannabinoid system is different and it doesn't always uh, have to do with tolerance. Like I've been taking the same amount of cannabis on my runs for about 10 years 
So mm -hmm. it's not like I'm increasing my dosage uh, each month to try and get through something or to have the same effect that I had, you know, a year earlier. Um, I'll, I'll take more if I'm running longer. Uh, you know, I did a 50K in April and that was about eight hours of running. You so, said 50K? Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. So you, so taking an edible right at the beginning of that, that would really see you through the whole time. No, uh, it was eight hours of running. So uh, I took, uh, I, I don't recall, it was somewhere, you know, between like 60 and 90. Uh, over the course of those eight hours, I would take 10 milligram uh, edibles uh, every hour, 90 minutes or so. And how do you figure out how to dose yourself like that? Is it just trial and error? It was for me, uh, and I encourage anyone else on that journey to, you know, uh, take a modest dose, uh, especially the first few times. Um, yeah, and I, I have had plenty of experiences of taking too much uh, and, and not having a desired effect or taking CBD too early. And, and that's something like any endurance runner, you know, has their whole system when it comes to when to eat protein, when to eat carbs, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when to take your gel packet, when to take your salt tab, you know, how much water to get. And it's, it gets very, very complex, which is the other reason you don't want to get too high. You know, if you've been running uh, 200, 300 mile races through the mountains over several days, you know, you don't want to forget anything at one aid station and then have another 10, 12 hours to run uh, to the next aid station. Yeah, that's a very good point. Um, and what about munchies? Do, do you, I know this is a weird question, but do you get hungry while you're running? Because whenever I have cannabis, I, I like within an hour, I need to eat a ton. I get just starving hungry. Uh, I do. Um, that changed a little bit with uh, uh, heart rate training. Um, I had a running coach uh, who helped me run that last race. Uh, and he gave me a whole it was a very complex uh, training regimen, but a lot of it was around my heart rate and keeping my heart rate low. Mm. And so then I was uh, burning uh, fat and not sugar. And so I wasn't getting quite as depleted because the first few years, um, I don't know, probably for six years or so when I would run high, never pay attention to my heart rate. And I would just burn, burn, burn uh, going out there. And then when I come home, I would just be inconsolably hungry like I would just tear that kitchen apart like a monster in a horror movie uh, and couldn't get full because, um, you know, I've been running for a couple hours and taking edibles. And so right. like the, the hunger was just extraordinary. Uh, but it, that's something that you just kind of get used to with uh, endurance running. You're always hungry. You're, you, you wake up in the middle of the night hungry. Uh, you're just burning so many calories. Your body's just constantly screaming for more food. Yeah, I bet it is. That's so crazy. What about CBD? Do you tend to use that, you said, for recovery after like a long run? Do you use it right afterwards? Do you use it the next day? Yeah, uh, both. Um, I tend to not use it uh, early in the run because it makes me a little sleepy uh, or not use too much of it. Uh, it's good for the anti-inflammatory effects. If you've been training really hard or you've got a really long run or any kind of uh, exercise, really, um, it, it helps with the inflammation uh, in my knees and in my ankles. Uh, CBD is incredibly popular with athletes uh, yeah. for a variety of reasons. And uh, it's being used in a lot of different ways. What about the conversation around vaping and smoking weed? Because I know that for athletes, you know, your lung health is a big issue. And so a lot of folks tend to move towards the edibles or the tinctures. But you said that you would often see folks vaping along the way. Is that very common? It's very common. Uh, you can hide a pen vaporizer quite easily uh, mm. and, and consume it very discreetly. Uh, which is important because uh, this is still a banned substance. Uh, and even though ultra running has been kind of more of a DIY sport compared to, you know, football, basketball, or the Olympics, uh, there's more and more drug testing happening. Uh, and uh, people do need to be more careful about it. But yeah, a lot of vaping, a lot of uh, smoking, which I don't usually do uh, when running or before a run. I find that edibles are uh, very preferable. They, they give me that um, sort of light feeling uh, in my body uh, and, and it's a, a bit of a body high 
that makes the run so much more pleasurable. Um, but yeah, across the board, uh, I've even known people that will uh, do dabs uh, at the trailhead, um, oh, wow. which would be way too much THC for me. I, I like dabs every now and again, but uh, that's going to knock me on my ass. But <laughs> uh, there's uh, this guy who started the 420 Games, um, this uh, cannabis-centric athletic event. He took, uh, I think it was 150 milligram THC uh, edible and swam from San Francisco to Alcatraz. I saw that in your book. That just blew my mind. Yeah, that would be impressive uh, for any athlete to accomplish. But uh, with that much cannabis in your system, I mean, 150 would just knock me out. Uh, But everyone's different. There's no shame with that. It's not like alcohol or pills. So how do you think more people can just incorporate cannabis into their lives to get them moving more often for the general health and wellness of folks? Because like you said, sports and health and wellness, it's not huge in America. Yeah, and I think people have this uh, idea that exercise means gyms uh, or sports. Um, So you either need to be like out on a a track, uh, you know, or on a football field or in a gym lifting weights. And it's just not true. You don't even need to spend money, really. I think the best exercise, especially for people who are new to it, is walking. If you've used cannabis a couple of times already and are comfortable with it, then, you know, you can incorporate into your exercise. I often say people don't try new things stoned uh, and don't try mixing cannabis and exercise uh, for the first time. Uh, You know, try them both separately a couple Mm -hmm. of times uh, before you integrate them and do it with a modest dose. Uh, I, I can't stress that enough. If you've got access to edibles, that's the way I recommend and start with like two to five milligrams of THC and just do it at your house. Uh, turn off your phone, make sure you don't have any responsibilities and um, get comfortable with the experience. And, and then, you know, go out walking uh, or go on YouTube and look for some yoga videos, some stretching videos uh, and, and type in for beginners if, if that's the case for you. Um, there's a lot of small things you can do throughout the day uh, or, or just once a day that you can incorporate cannabis with that will give your heart a little bit of uh, a challenge, give your muscles a little bit of a challenge, get some blood flowing through you. And that's really all you need. You don't need to, you know, even run uh, really. I mean, you could work your way up to that with like a more fast, uh, brisk walks. Uh, and if you've got access to uh, nature, Anywhere around you, I, I highly recommend that to people uh, for the mental health benefits as well as the physical health benefits. If you're brand new to this, there, there are paved trails out there that you could do a half a mile, a uh, very moderate uh, paced walk through. Um, but then if people want to uh, challenge themselves, like it's, it's a lot of fun to do really intense exercise. I love sprinting when I'm high. I love doing really intense things, lifting weights. You know, you can, you can take it to some extreme level if you want to, if that's what's inside of you. But I think that's probably the, the, the best guidepost is what's inside of you. You know, mm-hmm. if you don't feel like doing something really crazy, just move your arms a little bit, move your legs a little bit, you know, but find what's already inside of you and forget everyone else, everything else. Forget about social media, forget about Strava, forget about your, you know, watches. Uh, I mean, you can get into that stuff in time, but I agree with you. I think that stuff is a, is a detriment and, and people should just go inward, focus on your body, focus on your breath, feel what's going on inside of you and let that be your guide. That's some great advice. Thank you so much, Josiah, for joining us to talk about your book. Uh, Runner's High is out now. There's some really, really great stories in this book about PTSD and running in nature high and uh, a man that runs with goats. And uh, this, this is a great book. You definitely do well to get this one for yourself. Thanks so much for joining us, Josiah. Thanks so much for having me, Britt. This has been fun. Thanks to our guest this week, Josiah Hesse. Make sure that you check out his book, Runner's High, How a Movement of Cannabis-Fueled Athletes is Changing the Science of Sports. Head on over to differentleaf.com where you can find all the issues of our gorgeous cannabis magazine. And you can also find Different Leaf on the shelves at your local Barnes & Noble bookstore. Make sure you're following us on social media at Different Leaf or at Different underscore Leaf. I'm on social media at Brit the British. 
thanks to Homebody for the music. Mm-hmm.